Well, I just, again, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for the opportunity to get to talk a little bit about Habitat for Humanity. All right, where's my clicker? Right here. Um, I'm, I am, I, first, I always like to tell people I've, I've done the 12-step process. I am a recovering banker. So I, I was a banker most of my career and president of the bank, and uh, I had, we sold the bank in 2008, which was a good, really good timing. I, I unfortunately, was an insider, so I had to hold the stock for a year. By 2009 and 10, the stock had gone down a lot, but that's who for me, but it's a, you know, I did have the opportunity in 2010 to start working with Habitat for Humanity, and it is a great organization. It's been around for almost 40 years now. Uh, it, you know, one of the things you're going to hear, uh, let's see here, am I doing it right? Let's see, which way do I click? Well, I'm just doing it this way, I bet. Oh, there we go. Let me do another one. You know, some of the things that I've learned through Habitat and want to share with you, make sure, because the one is I'm here to tell, tell you a little bit about Nashville, but I want to tell you about Habitat in general, and thank you for your, a lot of y'all have participated already, but those of you who don't, we have Habitat, there's over a thousand affiliates across the country. Uh, in, the con in this country, we have uh, approximately 75, did I go backwards? It's going. It's going, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to it, and it doesn't matter, really. The, the, of the 7,500 homes are built in, the, in this country every year through Habitat for Humanity, uh, 75,000 in the world. So uh, every year, and so much is done now international through Habitat. So uh, it is a great organization. It's, it's supposedly the second largest uh, nonprofit brand in the world next to Red Cross. And it's amazing something came, coming from America's Georgia in the mid 80s to, to have that large of an impact. But it kind of, uh, Habitat's evolved too, but it is one thing that they, we've stayed true to is it is a volunteer participating ministry. You know, our, our, our mission uh, international is to put in God's uh, love in action by bringing people together to build houses, community, and hope. And when we say that, it's really important when we say, what we say about putting that is uh, the thing I have loved about, uh, about Habitat is it is non-political. I mean, when I says bringing people together, I've gotten to work with more people of diversity, political backgrounds, faiths, everything. And people, to see people on a weekend, and we build um, over, you know, we'll build a house, and it's amazing what, how it can be done. It's over a three-week period on four weekends. We'll build a house from start to finish. We're usually, Nashville's a fairly large Habitat affiliate, and we're building usually six. We've built it on a weekend, six going at one time. We've had as many as 14 going at one time. You know, and it's amazing, even the, especially during the recession, uh, we were the, uh, have been in the top 20 largest home builders in Nashville for the last five years. So we, we, we build, usually just Nashville alone build almost 50 houses a year. During the recession, that got us in the top 20. Right now, we're, we're still in the top 30 uh, home builders in Nashville. So, you know, that's a lot of philanthropic support in the community. But it is one, it is something that we have a, you know, a track record of building uh, homes, giving people the opportunity. But the thing I've enjoyed knowing uh, and learning about is the key things about being a volunteer ministry. We are, we are something that um, we could, if somebody gave us a billion dollars to build houses, but you don't even need to use volunteers anymore, we'd say that's not who we are. We, we love the, uh, the opportunity for not only, yes, to get funding to help do it, but those who come out in the community, the volunteers, and, and just Nashville alone, we have over 7,000 a year <laughs> volunteers come out. But that experience of not only helping somebody uh, but, you know, working with them, getting to know them, working with people in your own community, whether it's your church or your, your, uh, your, your work, uh, where you work, getting to work with them, you know, hand side by side, working together, is just what makes it so unique. Uh, I love to tell the story, you know, I, being from here, many years ago, uh, I'm one of the gray hairs in the room, you know, my grandfather was a tobacco farmer, and I remember when growing up, I would go and watch him and, and re really participate, and he would live in a little country uh, area, and every, uh, when it time, uh, came time to cut tobacco, you would literally ha go to a neighbor's house and you would work there and you would cut their tobacco, hang it in the barn, then they would, you know, go all the way down the community. And over about a two week period, you were working every day, but you were doing it at somebody else's farm. And at some point they came to your farm. And what Habitat does is it's basically, we do that too. We've all had help somewhere. We've, maybe our parents helped us. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, we got a special loan through the VA or something. Uh, so many of us, when we were younger or at some point in our life, were in a position where we needed somebody to help us. And that's what Habitat does. Uh, I didn't, when my parents helped me get in my first house, but they didn't give me the house and they didn't pay my mortgage, but they helped me just get the little bit necessary to get in the house. What we do at Habitat is uh, just in Nashville alone. We get a thousand applicants a year. 
for our, to, to become a Habitat program homeowner. And we only are building about, and going 50 families a year through the program. So I'm always, always to tell people, when I go through the classroom work and we're working with those families, there are, we're already working with the A students because what we believe in strongly is we are just giving an opportunity. We're giving the 0% interest mortgage. They pay back the full amount of the house at the appraised value, but it's 0% interest. Instead of being in public houses paying 750 to 800 and owning nothing and getting nothing in equity ever built, you know, their payment with 0% interest over a 30-year mortgage of a $125,000 house is about $600, and that counts property taxes and insurance. So it becomes affordable, but they do pay it back. They are required to. I work past dues at Habitat just like I did at the bank. And I'm proud to say that we have uh, con traditionally at, at Habitat in Nashville, with over, right now, we've been around almost 35 years, over 30 years, and we have almost seven, we have right at 700 mortgages we work. Now we have about five a month are coming in now, starting to pay off from the 30 years ago, and they've paid their house totally off. But by, by working that, we have a less than a 3% past due ratio. And the reason why that's true, and these are low income families, the reason why that's true, and I always like to say is, some often somebody assumes that low income means low character. And that's not true at all. I mean, what we're working with our families who are saying, we've shown the responsibility to, you know, one of the three things we look for in our family is, are they willing to partner? Do they have the capacity to truly pay it back? And are they, are they, do they have the, uh, um, you know, the wherewithal long term to, to invest and be a good family partner that will be, uh, you know, help work with us and come up with a down payment to pay their, you know, to pay, it's usually $2,500 down to close on the house. So we, we go through all these things and in the selection process of taking that thousand down to 50, and this is true of other habitats and, and you work with, that, you know, we're, I love the story. There was a young lady who got in a house last year. She was 30 years old. She said when she started applying when she was 23, she got turned down. She didn't have good credit. She didn't, you know, we, we look for a, a consistent income from a job or, you know, whatever, she, you know, from, uh, to show. We do an income debt ratio just like any bank. You know, we look at it. We look at their credit. We look at a background check. We look at all those things. And we, it, for, she had had a real hard time with her credit. And we kept turning her down. And her daughter, uh, she was a single mom, and she had one daughter, and her da daughter kept telling her, Mommy, don't give up. And it took her seven years to finally get her credit in order and consistency in her job and her income. And then Habitat was able to get her in the program, and she had, had her house by the time when she was 30, which was her goal. And it was a great day when you got to see her move into her house. And you knew the possibility of her being successful was outstanding. Because what Habitat does is, with the, the help of sponsors, volunteers, donors, all that, is we do look for, I and mean, we really have failure is just not an option for us because there's nothing worse if you were a volunteer or a donor and you went out there and you helped somebody and then you saw, you know, a year later they were the paper for being foreclosed on. Because uh, we do foreclose if they don't pay their, make their mortgage payment. You know, if they don't pay that back, that's part of that partnership, then somebody else is going to get that opportunity to get the 0% interest mortgage and all that. So you continuously have to earn that by make, making your mortgage payment on time. But we have such a low percentage because we've gone through and made sure we've done everything we can to help select the family that's shown a consistency and ready to take over home ownership. Now, the other thing is we do, um, and it's not just Nashville, but this is what Habitat's program is, is we go through over 100 hours of classroom work, of training. Now, some of y'all be, may be familiar, he's actually from here, but the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Pro, uh, Plan. They'll go through that. We have budget coaches come in. There are bankers, accountants, attorneys who come in and work with them. And not just one time and say, let's come up with your budget. But for us, when we say, let's go over your budget, it's just, you know, you're going through a six-month training process. So you've you got a job. And so everybody says, well, uh, Habitat's just a giveaway program. So family's selected. But you say, okay, I got selected. But then I got a job. I got to come in Tuesdays and Thursday nights to go to class for about six months. And then, by the way, when it's build season, you're going to go out either Saturday and Sunday morning, or either both, or at least one of them every, you know, for about a, a six-week period. So there's so much effort put into it, sweat equity and educational. But we go through from an educational standpoint the training of what it means to be a homeowner. You know, I, you know, I, I look back and say, I wish we taught this in high school or college. I wish my children had gone through this, and even though their dad was a banker, they didn't want to hear it from me. But we, they, we want to have it, you know, we go through it with our families. They do get to meet one-on-one -on -one with people and understand how you resolve conflicts in an HOA. Understand how you change your air filter, uh, you know, on a routine basis or your unit will not last. They understand, you know, how you can change out a washer on a sink because there's nobody makes more money than a good plumber. 
We all know that. So we, you know, those kind of things we train them on, spend a lot of hours. So again, the, the probability of success is outstanding by the time that family's there and they're ready. So then they go through the build experience and, and you know, again, it goes back to saying we believe it's so critical, not only that we get in a, a house, and again, being a banker, I mean, it was a big day for us when we would close a loan, but you know, basically it was over when we closed the loan. We'd helped you, we'd worked with you, but then we'd sell, sold the mortgage, and if you paid it, we never knew, because usually the mortgage was sold and things like that. That's not true at Habitat. We carry the mortgage. Now, you, the money we get is donations, pays for all the brick and mortar, and all the, the things that are around the, the land, everything. A lot of people say, well, okay, if you've got all the money to pay for it, why don't you just give the house to the family? Well, that's not the ministry. That's not what we do, because we think it's so critical that they pay it forward. And what happens is, when I have 700 mortgages being paid a month, you know, that money also is the, oh, it's a wonderful life. It pays forward. So a big part of our budget every year is made up, and where the sustainability of Habitat is through those mortgage payments that come in every month. So I have about a million eight that comes in a year in revenue every year from those mortgage payments. Well, that's not to just, that's not to just cover payroll. That's to literally build more houses. And the reason the capacity building we have is that. So it's a wonderful model, and it's great for the families because when you tell the family, you know, if you tell me I'm not going to pay, I'm not paying my mortgage, and they're thinking they're paying Citibank or whoever, uh, Chase, they don't know anybody. But when you're telling them if you don't make your mortgage payment, that next family who got it, wanting an opportunity just like you got is not going to may not get that opportunity. It makes a difference. It's very personal, and they realize that, and they understand that, and they and again, one of the reasons we have such a low pass due ratio is not only they've been trained and qualified but they also understand the importance of giving other people the same opportunity they were provided. Because this is not, you know, we love to say it's not a handout, it's a hand up. It gives them the opportunity to, they are being blessed by the work of volunteers and the donations. But it is also something that, that gives them a chance to do the same thing back for, their, you know, for the, another person in their community, to help pay it forward. Uh, one of the other things that, we, that Habitat's been a big part of, and I assume that some of y'all in your local cities have, are restores. Uh, from what I've heard and read, I mean, our restores are, is like the, I believe, the seventh largest retail uh, organization in the country as far as gross sales. It's amazing. We have over 1,400 locations. Restores are the stores where you make donations, home donations. If you're, we do a lot of it. It's amazing. Kitchen cabinets, things like that. People want, are doing a renovation in beautiful homes, and these are fabulous cabinets, but they want, you know, they want to change it out, and they'll call us up. We'll come and tear out the cabinets and sell them. And somebody will get a phenomenal deal, but we get home, uh, we get so many uh, donations. We aren't like Goodwill as far as taking clothes and some of those things, but as far as home, any kind of things related to home, um, appliances, uh, doors, anytime you're doing a renovation, we take all that, we turn around and sell it. Just Nashville alone generates almost $2 million of gross revenue a year, and we have about a 20% margin. So you can imagine with that, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, we'll end up making three hundred fifty to 400000 a year positive net, you know, positive revenue that goes directly into building, and we, our, our, our value of our sponsorship, our house, brick and mortar, 60,000, uh, not counting the land. So we look at it and say, every year we're building six homes a year based on just that social enterprise of not even having to ask you for another dollar, but by you donating stuff to our restores, and then we turn around and sell it to the public uh, in, at a great deal. It's a great, uh, again, social enterprise that helps us even build more homes. So again, if you, one of the ways you can help us is not only being a volunteer to come out on the build site or to volunteer to help us at our restore, because we do have a lot of volunteers that come in and help, uh, but it's also to make a donation to the restores if you have something. I love telling the story of this. We had, uh, in the middle of the recession, there was a home that was uh, built, again, the former banker was built for $2.5 million by a builder, and some poor banker made the loan, and it didn't sell. And so it sat there for about three years, and then when somebody bought it for a million dollars, First thing they did walked in, you know, they got it at literally 35 cents on the dollar. They said, the, the, the wife said, I don't like this kitchen. Brand new Viking appliances, cherry $80,000 kitchen, didn't like it. And they called us and said, you come tear it out, you can have it, because my, my wife wants to renovate the kitchen. House had never been lived in, $2.5 million house. So we went in there and tore it out, and we sold it for about $35,000 after we did all the work to get it. And, you know, it cost eighty. dollars but somebody got it for 35 and they were building their house and they fit it in there. It was a great thing. So th those things happen amazingly all the time where we have people that are doing a major renovation or just selling something that they don't need anymore, a couch, a chair, whatever. So that's been a big part of our success as well. So going back again, I just want to kind of give, give a, a quick summary and answer any questions you have. Thank you for your listening. Y'all have been very attentive. And I would also say thank you for those of you 
habitats all over the country. Again, those of you in your local community, I would encourage if you can, it's a great ministry. I, I say that as someone who's coming from the private sector that's got now in the nonprofit sector, I've just been so impressed with the efficiency. Every, for Nashua, I think I, that's the average for most habitats, uh, 85 cents of every dollar that you donate goes directly to program costs, not to overhead. So that's a very high ratio of, of actual direct cost going to the program that you're actually doing and very little for administration. So it's a very well run organization. Um, they, again, they, they, I think we do a great job of not dividing people, but bringing people together for a common cause. And it's just for such a good cause of helping your neighbor, not to give them another opportunity, but to also to, um, to just, you know, have a chance for a lower income family. There's no other chance like this to create a net worth and have something that helps them uh, further their family down the road than having home ownership, building equity. Last story, we have an area in town uh, in East Nashville now. It's really a kind of an eclectic area where everybody's moving to now. Well, 15 years ago, not a good area of town. 15, 20 years ago, was not a good area of town. So we were building some habitat homes back there in the late 90s. So we had just about a couple months ago, we had a woman kind of strolling in our office with one of our homeowners. And I hadn't seen her because she'd never been past two. And I'd only been there about five years. And she said, uh, can I talk to you? I got a little issue. I said, you know, I've got $8,000 left on my mortgage. I said, that's great. She said, well, somebody's asked me, I, they offered me $200,000 for my house. Well, what should I do? I said, well, no, you sell it to me first. <laughs> now, that was my first. Now, I said, I said one is, uh, don't sell it for $200,000 until you know what the appraised value is. And number two is, make sure you know where you're going with it. But the great news is, here's a woman who has lived a very, you know, continue to live, you know, not a, a, a super high income. But over time, she'd been there since the late 90s, over time she had built, literally, I'm sure by the house was worth at least 250 and probably 300. Uh, and so, you know, built a quarter million dollars of equity in her house. Uh, so, that, so she has something that she can pass on, retire on or, or down the road or, or pass on to her family. Uh, I would share with you one last thing. We are not into speculation and flipping. So you think, well, how did that family, boy, I bet they can make money. That's, I didn't really want to do all that work just so they could flip the house. Well, we don't, one thing we do at Habitat is that we have a shared appreciation. So uh, if you buy your house today, and we are in a rising house cost market. We've already had houses that are, we built two years ago they are appraising for almost 15000 more today than they did when we sold them, to, uh, sold them to the family two years ago. We have what's called a shared appreciation. Now, when you're paying your mortgage, and you know this, and again, our family is just 700 uh, families we're, that we're servicing mortgage now, they pay well over six hundred, dollars almost $700,000 a year in property taxes. So they're generating positive things in the community, helping pay for schools and all that. But <clears throat> the other thing is, um, with our families, you're having, um, from what we, you know, what we look for them to do, you know, they, they're having a chance, but if they by chance were saying, look, three years in, I'm going to sell this house. I feel like there's an opportunity. There's a 30-year, we have a 30-year shared appreciation that says, okay, you sell the house, any equity you, you pay off, which you're no interest, goes directly, and if you sell it, you know, we're not going to, that's yours. But if it is appreciated more than what we sold it for, you only get three-thirtieths of that shared appreciation. I mean, you have to earn the appreciated value. We don't, want, we don't want, this is not a ministry that helps people flip houses or speculate. This is for people who are going long-term, have a life-changing opportunity experience to, to you know, be there for a long period of time. We tell people, if you're just trying to move in this house and hope it's, you know, value's going three or four years so you can make a little money, that's not, you're at the right, wrong place. That's not what we do. So again, if, if somebody were to have a house appreciated substantially, you know, again, it'd take many years for them to, you know, experience the, the appreciation. If they stay in the house like the woman did in, in East Nashville, for the full 20 or 30 years of her mortgage, then yeah, absolutely, she gets to experience all the, not only the equity she paid down, but the appreciation. But you can't get your appreciation until over a longer period of time. So Habitat's done some good things to help protect the kind of the purity of what the model was, that your service and your help of helping those families, it does help them build equity, but they have to earn it over time. They don't get it through just some speculation. So does anybody have any other questions? Again, y'all have been very attentive. I don't want to take up any more of your time, but yes, ma'am. We take it on donation, I will say that, but unfortunately we have to purchase as well. And I would tell you, when I started in 2010, and we were talking about Miami and other areas, I mean, boy, Nashville was kind of in a recession. And I was like, well, this is easy. You know, we buy land anywhere. I was buying it. I was offering going to my banking buddies, and I was buying land, developed land that they'd taken over. I was buying it for about 20 cents on the dollar. And I thought, man, this is a piece of cake. Well, regrettably, I wish I'd bought more. I bought like 100 lots, and we saved millions through that. But today, it's not only come back to the value of what it was in 2008 and nine. 
it's exceeded that. So it's really difficult right now for us to find land that we can build 125,000 our home. Because we're having the same thing challenge that y'all, every a lot of these cities are having. Incomes are flat, especially for low income families. Pricing of cost of materials and land is going like this. That, I mean, I'm an Alabama graduate, but that's the problem. It didn't take me long to figure that out. That's not good. And then volume does not help on that one. So I would just say that doesn't help either. So we're really struggling with that. We're having to work with our local government and there's uh, and, and finding ways of trying to purchase land because that is my biggest fear for the future. There's a, the need is growing, but the cost of material and particularly land is going so high. I, I don't know because we're supposed to sell the house to the family at appraised, current appraised value. Well, that's another problem. I mean, you know, it, it is getting more expensive, but also the value. So, it, you know, if our families are making in that 30, you know, 30 to $40,000 a year range based on the size of their family, and all of a sudden the house was that we were selling for 120, you know, and really probably 115 in late, you know, in 2008. Today's at 135. If it goes to 150 or 155 or 160 and their family, their income is flat, I mean, I don't know how it can even qualify. Them. So we are struggling with that. And, and yes, we are working with our, our local, our mayor's office. Uh, we have a local metropolitan housing agency that we're working with who are getting public funds and some some HUD funds and trying to do it with, we really desperately need to partner with them to do that because that's our biggest challenge. And the other challenge is this, uh, <clears throat> what's happening is, and we're having a real problem with gentrification. I hope everybody knows what gentrification means now because I didn't two, three years ago, boy, I do now. And that is when people who have lived in an area for a long period of time, the values have gone skyrocketed and they no longer can afford to live there. Uh, one is, I mean, honestly, they can also sell for a great premium, but the other side is they just can't afford the property taxes and everything else going around them. So now they're saying well, they're having to move. But now where do they move? And what's happened is for every, I've heard this, for every one white collar job you add in downtown, you're, you need three service providers, you know, food and, you know, cleaning and all that. So you need three service providers. Well, our service providers can't live in downtown anymore. It's too expensive. So they have to move further and further away from town, and we don't have a good public transportation system. And our interstates are getting full. So this quality of life that we have of everybody being friendly and all that, people get very irritable when they sit in a car for an hour to come to work. And it really kind of changes your whole attitude about life because your quality of life starts going down. And I'm afraid Nashville's going to start experiencing this, and we're challenged by that because our workforce families don't, can't afford to live close to where the jobs are, and so many jobs are being created in downtown, and they're having to get there, and it's getting harder and harder to get them here. So it, it's a challenge our new mayor who just recently got elected is going to have to take on. She's got a real, um, it's, a, it's an infrastructure issue that's going to take billions of dollars to fix, but we better get to it because it, it's a real challenge because we've got to, we can't just keep displacing families that are, that are workforce uh, incomes and pushing them further and further out. It, just, it doesn't work. It's going to, at some point, it's going to be a real, a real challenge. Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. If somebody donates a home, yeah. yeah. Some, some of your REOs, you know, clients, they, might, they don't necessarily want to know what to do. Right. Uh, now, some of that, maybe where I come from, years ago, places where you might not take the home, right. but they have a deal. That's okay. You right. Find something else to do. Um, but do you get involved in those situations? We do, and it's a case by case basis. I would tell you, and there are some people who have done that, and they've given some wonderful property, and we've received that. but. I've also been called and sent out and somebody was going to give me five lots in a development. I was so excited about that, five lots for free. And it was like, it was a cliff. <laughs> it was like, I mean, there's no way you could have been, it'd been a quarter million dollar foundation just before you could even come out of the, off a, you know, and build a, a affordable house. So we have to look at it case by case because sometimes people are just trying to get rid of something. But sometimes really we have had some people that have offered up and, and helped. We don't have any trust. <laughs> okay. But we do we do look on case by case basis, and it has helped us in occasion. Anybody else have any other questions? Do you have to pay off the other existing tax tax liens that you get for one C P? There's other subsequent years. Do you need to pay off those other tax liens before you donate it to you? Uh, I mean, obviously, we we need a clear title when we receive it uh, from the property. You know, if we're going if somebody's donating their their house or land to us, um, so we we have to look at all that. That's a good question. Did you have any other questions? Y'all yeah. uh, been very attentive. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support of Habitat. Again, y'all got Habitat everywhere. Appreciate it.